What's up everyone? I'm Josh Evans and this tutorial is going to cover the components and mods that go into my signature Tiny Whoop build. Since the beginning, I've been flying my Tiny Whoop almost exclusively in Acro and if you fly in Acro, you know that you break a lot of components doing this. I have pretty much broken every single piece on a Tiny Whoop and over the course of all that destruction, I've come up with a parts list and a series of mods that are gonna increase the survivability of your Tiny Whoop when weighed against the rigors of Acro Flight. I call my Tiny Whoop the Bombproof Acro Tiny Tank. Now, keep in mind that no Tiny Whoop is actually bombproof. I just wanted a clever acronym. Now this video is not going to specifically be a build video. I'm not gonna cover all the small details that go into putting a Tiny Whip together. There are a lot of videos out there for that. This is just going to be about the pieces and the mods that I use to increase the survivability of the whoop. So with that in mind, let's get into it. We'll take a look at the components first, and then we'll take a look at all the mods that I make. Every build starts right here with the cockroach frame. The frame is the foundation of your build and you want it to withstand the stresses you're going to put on it. In my opinion, there's no other frame on the market that is as strong and as resilient as this. So this is what you should be building your, your whoop around. We will need to modify it slightly to accept these awesome sauce motors. These motors are 20,000 kV. They provide all the power that you're going to need to catch those crazy acro moves but they are slightly longer than the Insanes, so we're gonna need to modify the motor channels on the frame to accommodate them. Also, keep in mind with acro flying, your motors are disposable, they are consumables. You're gonna use them up. They don't last as long as something like the Special Sauce, so just know that going in and buy a few extra sets. Up next is the camera. I use the FX900 and a 10 degree mount. I like the FX900 because it's lightweight, it's affordable, it's got great clarity, it comes with a mullet mod, and I choose to use a dipole antenna. I've just found the dipole is much more likely to survive a crash. I also use a 10 degree mount. This is just a preference, but I like the 10 degree because I like the perspective it gives me, the speed is perfect, and I feel like it makes catching rolls and flips much easier than something higher. Up next are props. Nothing really that special here. I use the E-Chine 4-Blade. I've flown a bunch of different props and I found that these are the best at catching acro moves. So this is what I use on my build. The most important part of the build is the flight controller. I use the B-Brain V2. I used to fly the V1. It was okay, but I found that it did not handle prop wash very well and it liked to wash out in corners. I think that this uh, V2 has fixed all those problems. This thing gives me the confidence that I need to fly the way I want. And lastly, I use the Batmech canopy. These are the best canopies that I've found because their geometry has some hard lines in it which gives it structural integrity. Also, these mounting wings have some creases, which I found help hold it onto the frame whenever you're dropping this thing upside down on its head from 15 feet. I found that these curved canopies tend to flex a little bit and pop off, which is just kind of annoying. Ultimately, your canopy is an aesthetic choice, but another reason I like these Batmechs is because acronym. Now let's get into the mods. We're gonna need a few extra tools outside of the standard fare. Those tools include welders. This is your best friend when you're modding a whoop. I use this little beat up screwdriver for applying welders. I use some snippers and some black tape. That's pretty much all we're gonna need to make these bomb proof mods. Our first mod is to the frame. Like I said, the motors do not fit into these mounting slots, so we need to cut out that little tiny post to make room for them. So we're gonna take our snippers, we're just gonna gently wedge it in there and cut out those four posts. There we go. Next, we need to apply a little bit of welders to the battery tray. This is really the only spot of the frame I found that tends to break. 
So, we're gonna take a small dab of welders and just lightly paint it onto the frame there. Now, we just let that dry. The next mod we're gonna make is to the camera. Very common failure point is this lens assembly popping off of the board. I've broken two of these in one night just from dropping the whoop on its head. What we're gonna do is take a bit of welders and our screwdriver and apply a thin line of welders around the outside of the base of the camera. That's gonna pretty much prevent that problem from happening. I haven't broken a single camera since I discovered this. Now, a disclaimer, you do want to keep your lens cap on. If you get any welders on the camera while you're doing this, the lens is gonna pretty much be ruined. So keep that in mind. Now, we wanna just let that dry. The next thing we're gonna do is modify the flight controller. We're gonna remove this camera mounting hardware that's on the outside here. These two pieces of plastic are intended for the proprietary camera and VTX that are designed to go along with the B-Brain V2. I choose not to use that camera system simply because of the extra weight, so I'm gonna pull that hardware off of there. Another disclaimer, if you make this mod, you're not gonna be able to use that proprietary camera, so just keep that in mind. So we're gonna take our snippers, we're gonna gently grip this piece of plastic and just move it back and forth until it releases from the pins underneath. Do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Now we've got these small pins sticking out of the flight controller. We're gonna remove those in the same manner. Just grip them, move them back and forth until they break free from their pads. The last thing we're gonna do is remove this piece of foam. Just grip it gently, pull it right off of the top of the board. Now the board is modified and ready for the FX900. Now that our camera is dry, we are going to waterproof these components with this silicon conformal coating. Now, what we're gonna do is gently paint a layer of conformal coating all over the surface of both of these components. Another disclaimer, while we're applying this, do not get it into the USB port, any of these motor mounting ports, or on any of your switches. If you do, these components will no longer work, so be very careful when applying conformal coating. Now we're just gonna let those pieces dry. So let's reinforce the canopy. Where these tend to break is right here on the inside of the mounting wing, right below the mounting hole. This is very thin plastic. It is not very tough, so that welders will go a long way towards keeping this thing intact in a crash. Just like that. Now that our camera is dry, we're gonna install it into the 10 degree mount and we're gonna glue it in place with welders. I found that in a crash, these cameras have a tendency to pop out of their mounts, which is really just more annoying than anything, but it does equal downtime, so we're gonna prevent that right now. When you're installing this camera, we're gonna want the wires here sticking out the left-hand side of the camera if you're looking at it. 
Also, when we put the VTX in, we're gonna want the channel button again on the left-hand side. There we go, we've got that seated. Now, with the lens cap still on, we're gonna glue this in place. I found the best place for welders for holding this into the mount is right here on the right-hand side on the, on the lens. And then on the bottom, if you're looking at it like this, on the left-hand side up here by the antenna. And that's pretty much all the reinforcement we're gonna need to keep this in its mount. Now, let it dry. So let's start the assembly. We're gonna start by installing the motors into the frame. You'll notice the battery tray tapers in on one side. I use that as the back. So motor installation, blue and red wire goes upper left, rear right. Black and white wire, upper right, rear left. I'm gonna give each one of these a good twist before we install them. Now to get these seated into the frame, route the wires through, and then we are going to gently press the motor into the frame with a pair of pliers or clippers. So I just gently press on the top of the can until it slides into place. Next thing we'll do is wire up the camera to the flight controller. I'm going to cut my battery lead on the camera down to about an inch. And then gently strip the wire with razor blade. Now we need to tin that and solder it onto the flight controller. This red wire is going to attach to the pad on the flight controller where the red wire is. Black wire, black wire. Just like that. Before progressing any further, I always do a battery test right here, make sure the camera is working. Now, let's install the flight controller in the camera. Make sure when you install this, the USB port and the battery lead are in the back of the frame. Now we'll plug in the motors and stow the excess wires. One of the last few mods I make is gluing the flight controller into the frame. If you've flown Acro and you've had a few crashes under your belt, you know that it is possible for the flight controller to pop out of the frame right here in the front. When that happens, it starts vibrating around the next flight, which kind of makes the gyro go crazy. And you'll kind of feel like, oh, my whoop is not flying properly. And then you look at it, that's the problem. The flight controller's popped out. So again, we're gonna break out the welders and we are going to glue the flight controller into place. If you ever need to remove the flight controller, you just pull on it, the welders breaks free. It's just like soft plastic. 
So for this, we are going to use a generous helping of welders. And we are going to apply it right here where the flight controller meets the frame. And once more, let it dry. The final mod I make is motor retention. I've seen people use little rubber bands around the motors here to hold the wires in place, but when you're crashing a lot, you're gonna lose those. Also, these motors can slip in the mounts when they get hot. So what I do is I take half inch black tape, I run it out to about an eight inch strip, I slip that down the middle, and then cut that into four two inch pieces. I use those two inch strips to wrap around the motors to keep everything locked into place. In addition to holding the motors in place, it looks really cool with the black on gold. Now, we just put the props on and we're ready to fly. And that's it, people. That's what goes into my bat build. If you are somehow able to destroy a component that I have not mentioned here and you have a clever solution to that problem, by all means, let me know. We can continue to develop this concept of the acro tank together. In the meantime, please like and subscribe to Josh Evans FPV on YouTube.